Hello all and welcome to this video where we take a close look at strong duality and the KKT conditions. Unlike the weak duality which was quite general, strong duality is very specific to a small class of problems. We will not look at the proof, only the result. We begin with writing a convex optimization problem in the standard form. As compared to the earlier form, this form is written in a more specific manner to cover most of the cases. But you can always reduce it to the earlier form. We have the problem p is equal to minimize over x in intersection of p and calligraphic x f of x subject to g i of x less than equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to m at j of x equal to 0 for j equal to 1 to m and sk of x less than equal to 0 for k equal to 1 to q. Here f and g i are proper closed convex functions. Further hj and sk are affine functions that is they are of the form ak transpose x plus bk. The set P is polyhedral that is it can be written in the form of affine inequalities and equalities. Further the set calligraphic x is a subset of the domain of the problem which is the intersection of domains of f and that of gi's and is closed convex. Now this is a convex optimization problem because we have convex objective, convex inequalities and affine equality constraints. So different from the general standard form that we looked earlier, we have taken special care to explicitly write down the affine inequalities and equalities separately from GIs and likewise the polyhedral com components separately from calligraphic X. In addition to things being affine or convex, we require one more condition that is called the Slater's condition or strict feasibility. The condition says that there exists an x tilde, not necessarily the optimal x star, but some x tilde, which is in the relative interior of the calligraphic x and satisfies g i of x tilde strictly less than zero. Equivalently, we are saying that the feasible region defined by the constraints g i of x less than or equal to zero and calligraphic x has a non-empty relative interior. Note that the strict feasibility condition is not applied to the affine inequalities or to the polyhedral part, but only to calligraphic X and GIs. That was the reason we wrote them out separately. The assumption of existence of a strictly feasible point is not an unrealistic one, but is in fact satisfied in many, many problems. So under all these conditions, that is a convex problem of the form provided here and the Slater's constraint qualification, strong duality holds. As you can see, we did require a very specific set of conditions to ensure strong duality as compared to weak duality. Further, these conditions are not necessary but only sufficient. Strong duality may actually hold even if they are violated say if the problem is non-convex. In fact, there do not exist any necessary conditions but there are more sets of sufficient conditions that have been identified. As a special case, consider the linear programming problem that is one we, where we only have affine objective and constraints. LPs are convex and Slater's condition does not apply to them because there is no calligraphic X or GIs. Therefore, strong duality always holds for linear programs. Next, let us come to the KKT conditions or the Karush Kun Tucker conditions, which are essentially optimality conditions for general constraint problems that satisfy strong duality. The KKT conditions hold for all problems that satisfy strong duality. So if you know that strong duality holds for a problem, be it through verification of the sufficient conditions like convexity and Slater's condition, or through any other way, you can be sure that the optimal solution will satisfy KKT conditions. You may recall that in the first video, we showed using first order conditions for optimality that for an unconstrained problem, min over x, f of x, if a point satisfies gradient of fx star equal to zero, then it is optimal. More generally, if you have a constrained problem of the form min of f of x, min of f of x over x in calligraphic x, gi of x less than equal to zero, hj of x equal to zero, and you know that uh, strong duality holds, then the corresponding optimality condition is the KKT condition. So let us look at the statement of the result. We have the following standard form, 
P is equal to min over x in calligraphic x, f of x subject to gi of x less than equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to m, hj of x equal to 0 for j equal to 1 to p, where calligraphic x is the subset of the domain of the problem, which is the intersection of domains of all functions f, g, i, h, j. Let us associate uh, Lagrange multipliers lambda i and nu j with these inequalities and write down the dual problem as d is equal to max of q lambda comma nu subject to lambda greater than equal to 0. Let x star be the primal optimum solution so that f of x star is equal to p and let lambda star nu star be the dual optimum so that q of lambda star nu star is equal to d. Then if p is equal to d, it implies that kkt conditions hold and are given by first is gi of x star is less than equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to m and hj of x star is equal to 0 for j equal to 1 to p which is not surprising it is simply saying that the optimal x star is feasible which is obvious. Of course x star should also be in calligraphic x. Lambda star greater than equal to 0 which is the dual feasibility condition is again obvious. The dual optimum has to be feasible. This is in addition to implicit constraint that lambda star and nu star have to be in the domain of q. Third is lambda i star into g i of x star is equal to 0 for each i is equal to 1 to m which is the complementary slackness condition. This is new because it is saying that either lambda i star is 0 or g i of x star is equal to 0 or both are 0. So at least one of these two quantities must be 0. When g i of x star is strictly less than 0, we call it a slack because it is not on the boundary and we have some slack. Likewise, if lambda star is greater than 0, there is a slack in the dual constraint. The complementary slackness condition is saying that there can only be slack in one of these for every i. That is, only one of the primal and dual constraints can be strictly satisfied. Finally, we have the stationarity condition which is saying that x star is the x that minimizes the Lagrangian L of x comma lambda star comma nu star. So this is saying that if you substitute the optimal lambda star and nu star, the only x that will minimize the Lagrangian is going to be the optimal x star. The stationarity condition can be expressed using gradient of Lagrangian if calligraphic x is Rn and the problem is convex. Otherwise, the form in which it is given is general. Let us now derive the KKT conditions from the strong duality condition. First of all, the first two conditions, namely the primal of feasibility and the dual feasibility are obvious and follow from the definitions of the problems. For the other conditions, we simply revisit the proof of the weak duality as we saw earlier and try to make the inequalities into equalities. So we begin by writing down the Lagrangian for x star lambda star nu star which looks like this. Here the third term is 0 and the second term is less than or equal to 0. So if you remember we said that we can upper bound it by f of x star which is equal to p. Likewise we can lower bound it by min of x in calligraphic x of l of x comma lambda star comma nu star which is the dual function evaluated at lambda star comma nu star which is d. At this point let us stop and recall that we assume that strong duality holds that is p is equal to d. So what does that mean? It means that all these inequalities are actually equalities. Now let us take a look at them one by one. Let us first look at the upper bound. The second term is always zero from primal feasibility. Next, each sum end in the first term is supposed to be less than or equal to zero because g i of x star is less than or equal to zero and lambda i of star is greater than or equal to zero. So if p is equal to d, the only possibility is that the second term is zero. And in fact, each sum end in the second term must be zero or else things would add up to something negative. The condition is exactly the complementary slackness condition. The stationarity condition that is x star equal to min of L of x comma lambda star comma nu star also follows in the same way by making the lower bound into an equality. So we have finally established the KKT conditions. 
Let us quickly look at the stationarity condition once more. It was given by x star is equal to min over x in calligraphic x, L of x comma lambda star comma nu star. If calligraphic x is Rn and L is differentiable in its first argument, then the stationarity condition can be written as gradient with respect to the first argument of L x star lambda star nu star equal to 0. In the more general case, if L is convex, then we can write the problem as minimization of L x comma lambda star comma nu star plus indicator function of calligraphic x at x. The optimality condition in this case takes the form 0 is one of the subgradients with respect to x of L x comma lambda star comma nu star plus indicator function of calligraphic x at x evaluated at x equal to x star. Here this is the partial operator denotes the subdifferential. The subdifferential is a set so that's why the condition is expressing the fact that 0 lies in that set. If you do not get the last condition no need to worry we will cover the subgradients in more detail later. So that's all for this video. In the next video we will look at a specific example application that will allow us to look at the various aspects of the KKT condition.